Hi guys, I'm Lori Vitali. It is time. It's the season of dips. It's the season of outdoor cooking. It's the season of gathering and having so much fun. One of the things that needs to be on your menu going forward, pretty much all the time, but especially this holiday, you know, this summer season, especially if you have a flat, um, like Blackstone or a fat gr griddle, fat, flat griddle, has to be this chorizo queso. I shared a little tip, not a tip, but like a little snippet of it in my stories a while ago, actually Joe did, and all of you went crazy for it. I actually made this in the video for membership, so you could see me making this on the Blackstone when we had burgers and hot dogs, and it was so phenomenal. And that has just become the dip that everyone asks me to bring or to make anytime I have anybody over. It's very, very easy. It's customizable. It's versatile. Everyone loves it and I just keep the entire skillet on my Blackstone on as low as it goes and it just stays gooey and warm and delicious and people just can't get enough. It's very simple. There's, a, there's, there's an ingredient in here that's a kind of a hit or miss for people. Um, I'm just going to get it over with. It's, it's going to be some Velveeta, okay? I know it's a hit or miss with people. It's not an ingredient that I use often. I probably only use it for this recipe, if I'm being honest with you, because it works really, really well. Let's get going, and I'm going to show you what I have in here. In here, I have some chorizo that's cooking, um, and I'm making sure to break it up as much as I can with a wooden spoon, and make sure that you buy the raw chorizo. Often, it's labeled Mexican-style chorizo, um, and it should be right with the ground beef and the ground uh, chicken and all the ground meats in your grocery store. You can also do this with Italian sausage. You could do this with ground beef and then just season it however you want. The chorizo is really nice because it has so many different wonderful spices in it. It's a little smoky. It's a little spicy. It's pretty phenomenal. I'm going to go ahead and dice a yellow onion. Like I said, you can do this with Italian sausage. You could do this with ground chicken. You could do this with ground turkey. My only stipulation there is that if you're going to do that, just make sure that you give that ground chicken and that ground turkey lots of really good seasoning because you want it to be super, super flavorful. And then I have some diced, petite diced tomatoes with green chilies. You can literally use just diced tomatoes or you can do what I did on the Blackstone in that video if you've seen it, where I just chopped up fresh tomatoes, you chop up a jalapeno and you add it in while you're cooking the ground beef and it is, well, you, you chorizo and it is fabulous. I don't add any additional oil to the chorizo because it has enough fat to cook in but it's not so much fat that it needs to be discarded. You can see it's just enough. And I'm gonna go ahead and let the onion cook with the chorizo for a few minutes. I want it to cook down a little bit and develop some color. Add your garlic right in. Give that a stir. Let that cook for like one minute. Doesn't need too long. You just kinda wanna cook out that raw garlic flavor. And while that's happening, Go ahead and add your spices. I have a mixture here. You can use taco seasoning, being straight, straightforward with you. I have a mixture here of pretty much what makes taco seasoning mixes. It's a little bit of chili, cumin, oregano, garlic, onion, cayenne pepper. Add it in, give it a stir. You really wanna add spices to something with oil or a mixture like this because what happens is it really kinda helps bloom those oils and it kind of makes the flavor so much more intense because you're kind of waking it up right away and toasting the spices, if you will. They only need a few seconds and then you'll immediately start to smell them. Add your tomatoes, I do liquid and all, and then I just let that liquid cook out for like two minutes, just giving it a stir. I'm gonna lower that. Okay, now this is the part where you take your Velveeta, I just cut it into like big pieces like that. Don't come at me. I know it's a novelty item here that we don't use often in Laura in the Kitchen, but it does work really well for this. Now let me tell you how I like to do this. By the way, this is pepper jack. I'm using uh, 8 ounces of pepper jack and I don't need to cut it. I don't need to shred it because it's all going to get melty and gooey, so I just tear it apart. Let me tell you how I do this on my flat griddle outside. I cook the chorizo on the, on the, you know, on the flat top what you want to call it, cook it, cook the onions, the pe all of it, right? And then I transfer 
the cooked chorizo and the onions and the tomatoes and the garlic and the spices, I transfer them to a cast iron skillet. Once I transfer it to a cast iron skillet, I just leave the cast iron skillet covered with some foil on a low part of the grill and then just let it sit there until everything is melty and gooey. It takes about, mm, about 10 minutes and then I just leave it on very low or sometimes I'll even turn off half of my grill um, and keep it on the off portion but the other side's still on from cooking obviously and that residual heat just keeps the, the dip so creamy and so wonderful and so delicious and we cannot get enough. A splash of milk. I'm gonna add a splash of milk to this, about a quarter cup, because what happens is it helps make everything really creamy and really delicious. It's incredible. I'm gonna place the lid on, and I'm gonna let this cook, well, I'm gonna let this be on low for 10 minutes until everything gets all nice and melty. Dun, da, da, da. Ah! It's been about 10 minutes. Be careful, you see how I mean, I've had to keep this on low. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit. If you're gonna be doing this on a flat top grill and you're gonna be using like one of those disposable aluminum containers, be really careful that you double up on the containers because the bottom can scorch really easily, typically because, I mean, it's a really thin, um, it's really thin aluminum container and it's like directly on the heat and it can scorch, like if the cheese starts to melt down, it can scorch the bottom really badly. So just keep an eye on it. I'm gonna crank it up just for one second, but it is so creamy and it's so delicious. My sister loves leftovers of this. It does kind of, when you store leftovers in the fridge and as this cools, it kind of gets really, really thick. So you wanna keep it somewhere warm. Like I said, I keep it on the grill itself. Um, she takes leftovers and she'll either reheat them in a pan and then puts eggs in it, so good, or she'll take leftovers, reheat them, and then just literally make herself nachos. She'll take the chips, put them on a plate, put this on top, sour cream, guac, salsa, and it's like, she says it's the best nachos she's ever had. So that is that, I uh, wanted to share that with you. She wanted to make sure I shared that with you because it is a, an absolutely phenomenal idea if I do say so myself, but that is it. I haven't added any additional salt here simply because the cheeses are really salty, the chorizo is really salty. I don't want to go overboard, but I mean, look at this. It is so creamy. It's so delicious. It's spicy, not too spicy, although that depends on how much chili powder you like to put in. You know, I'm not hosting 4th of July this year. We're going over friends of ours. They're having a gathering. Guess what I was asked to bring? Take a wild guess. This bad boy right here. Everyone loves it. People have taken leftovers when I had the burger night, put it on their burger, put it in their hot dog. It is to die for. Go to lariaupinthekitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. Happy summer, happy gathering. Happy enjoying life. Cheers. Mm.